The wonderful wizard of healthy living, Dr. Mehmet Oz, is in Seattle, and he's in the house. Dr. Oz is one of the world's leading heart surgeons. He's a medical consultant to Oprah Winfrey and the host of Dr. Oz, weekdays at 7 on Como 4. He's visiting our area to accept an academic honor from Bastyr University. And since he happens to be in the neighborhood, the good doctor did accept our invitation for an in-studio in edition of Ask Dr. Oz. And we are so honored. Uh, Dr. Oz, welcome to the Bob River well, Show. Thank you, Bob. I never would have turned it down. It's a great honor to be here. Well, and to meet you in person is a thrill. Well, you're very kind. You know, I love coming to Seattle. I've been here many times, and you're kind enough to mention Bastyr, but you're a unique city. You have access to so many raw resources for health. Now, not just Bastyr University, which is the leading uh, naturopathic institution in the country. You know, you are the hotbed for alternative medicine here, but you also have access to the food you need and the exercise you can do to live your best life. And it's a real wonderful experience for me to come out and visit with you. You, you know, know way, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, go ahead. I'm an alumni of Bastyr. I don't know if anybody knows that. Are you really? Yeah. You're kidding me. No, I'm not. I went there when it was a rehab center before. <laughs> 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 we have many, fa many fine opportunities to get healthy yeah. here in Seattle. <laughs> you do. So, I love that building. <laughs> it's great. If, uh, if my mom were alive, by the way, uh, she would say that you're a saint. And I'll tell you why she would say that. It's because you have plenty of success. You have plenty of good things in your life. And yet you give so much to try and help people. You are obviously on a mission that goes above and beyond making a living. Tell me about that. Well, you're kind with those words. You know, I, I never thought I'd be doing any kind of media of this nature. I uh, always felt my calling in life was to practice medicine. I went to medical school like most young doctors thinking I'd learn it all by the time I graduated. But you know, somewhere along the line, as you start practicing medicine, and we call it practicing medicine on purpose because you're just sort of working out the kinks and you're taking care of patients, you begin to realize that patients have not read the same books that you've read. And that's a very disheartening process. And as I began to do heart surgery, which is what I still do every week, uh, and I began opening people's chests with band saws, I began to realize that, my goodness, these people look like deer in the headlight when you tell them that they could have prevented the need for surgery by taking a couple proactive steps on their own. And so my wife, who's in the, in the media business, began to say, you know what, uh, if you're really serious about this, let's go off and make a show together. And like most uh, good and, things. And Lisa, your wife, is a, uh, she's an actress, she's a producer, she's a writer, she was in media. Yeah, she was, and she, you know those Visine commercials with the, blood, the bloodshot Gets eyes? Gets the red yeah. eye? Yeah. Those are her eyes. Wow. Those are her eyes? Yes. Yeah, so she's she, a nice eye. Did you see her on well, TV what was first? She, she goes, God, look at that eye. What was she smoking, though? <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, Swimming they, pool. Exactly. <laughs> they actually put uh, fumes in your eyes if, you're, if you have commercial. reactive eyes. Exactly yeah. right. It's very interesting how they do it. But, uh, you know, she, she got an uh, honorary doctorate yesterday at with me. That's why we were out here visiting. So, uh, it, so, in a way, she can't blame you for how busy you are now because it's kind of her fault. It is all her fault. Good. And we, we've done much of it together, by the way, thankfully. And she's the one who's, you know, of course, in my house, the prosecution never rests. I mean, she's <laughs> my harshest critic. And she'll come after me. But she keeps me honest. And I think one of the beautiful things about having great mentors in life, and I've been blessed with, with uh, quite a few, is they teach you how to talk about life in ways that resonate with folks. And so if you feel like your calling is to make a difference, and, you know, we all do make a difference in the world. Not, it's not always for the good, but you try to make a difference uh, to help folks around you. And you've got a little bit of knowledge, then to share with only people in your office one-on-one one hurts you. It, it holds you back. And I did math once. I thought, you know what? If I do 5,000 open heart operations in my life, which is what I've done, and I double it to 10,000, am, am I any better off? Have I helped that many more people? Wouldn't it be smarter to go out there and try to, to share insights that you've gained on the front lines of healthcare? And that's what the show's all about. And we were talking earlier, Dr. King Griffey Jr. announced his retirement yesterday at 40, which is a long time for a baseball player. How long can you be a heart surgeon? I mean, there's the hand and the eyes. and I mean, it's a physical thing you're doing. That is a very profound question. I have never been asked that before. And, I, and I'm going to answer it to you know, because we talk about it inside the field of medicine. You reach your peak as a heart surgeon around age 40 to 45 because you've learned everything. You know, it takes you a decade to figure out how to do it. And then you're physically able to stay up all night taking care of people who are desperately clinging to the crevice of life about to fall into the abyss of death. So you're, you're good at that. But then when you get into your late 50s, early 60s, you begin to slow down a little bit. Some of the energy starts to seep out of you. And that's when we sort of start to have colleagues operate together just to support each other emotionally and physically through the process. But talking about Ken Griffey for a second, you know, I, I did a great show uh, with a, a gentleman who's done, done a lot of work with the Terra Humana Indians in Mexico. These are people who run... 25, 30, 50 miles a day. They're, you know, incredible athletes. But they're actually not incredible athletes. They're like all of us. It turns out that your endurance at age 17 is the same at age 65. Your endurance, because you know why? Our ancestors never outran the antelope. 
they outlasted the antelope. I read this in your book. Was this, is this yeah. in this book? Yes, we talked a little bit about yes. it. Uh, and, and we are actually meant to run like 12 or 13 miles a day normal. Yeah, move around anyway. You don't have to always yeah. run it, but you can walk that far. And when you do put in that, like those, that kind of mileage, by the way, you can't get heavy because you burn off anything you put in your mouth. Looking at me, this is going to be hard to believe, but I did the Portland Marathon. <laughs> did you really? Yeah. yeah. He walked it. It yeah. took him five years ago. 16 it's days. Well. Did it. And then he said, that's it. I'm never doing anything yeah, like that again. Man, believe me, I need to get back there. But I was amazed at how I mean, some really old, you know, senior people, eighty plus running. years old, yes. that are running you, this. You're thing. not as fast as a young man. Your your peak activity levels at age twenty seven. If you're a male, women pretty close to that as well. So you're not as fast as when you're twenty seven. You're not as strong as when you're twenty seven. You can't jump as high. But not about that. It's about the endurance. Anyone out there listening? If you're between the ages of seventeen and sixty five, no more excuses. So my son is twenty seven. Can I call him later today and say, you know, I was chatting with Doctor Roz. You're over. You yeah, just you're peaked. Yeah, that's right. It's you're done. Your way out. <laughs> or you can say, hey, you're a stud. You're top of your game right, right now. Right now, uh, it could be positive. <laughs> yeah. Doc, you mentioned, um, you know, uh, senior surgeons will work with with their colleagues and work together just as a safety check. But are there? Do they test senior surgeons? I mean, like when you're driving. You know, they'll, they'll make you take a driving test here. Do they have a surgeon put his, put your head on the thing? Is the colon ascending or descending? <laughs> Is the tumor inside the lung or outside the lung? And you, you, you have to pass like the a, test. Like a surgeon vision you, test. You know, you know, exactly. You know what we do? We, uh, we have mental te- checks on knowledge. So you have to get re-examined in order to maintain your board certification every five to 10 years, depending right. on the specialty. So that's all good to make sure you've caught up with the information. But the real question you're asking is physical ability. Right. And you know, we don't test response times. We don't test endurance ability. And that's partly what we try to do within the field is try to police each other and try to make sure that you stay on top of your game. You know, the number one reason surgeons retire early is because they've golf. hurt themselves. Golf, golf. right, golf. <laughs> 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 right. It could be golf. I wish so. But, you know, you lean over its uh, body all day long and you get neck problems. Oh, yeah. And so all you, and the aches start to build up and after a while you can't do it anymore. And so it's smart for healers to be able to heal themselves because then they can heal people around them a little more effectively. I want to ask you a little bit about you and then we're going to start some medical stuff. I look at you. I see you on TV. My wife goes to the thing last night at Bestier. You're here with us. You're across the hall with our sister station. You'll be on TV all day. Your show will be on. And I wonder, if you were your doctor, would you tell you to slow down? Well, I, I, let me tell you two things. That, that, and it's a very fair question. The first is, it's not about time management. It's about energy management. And you guys know that, right? If it's going well and you're feeling hot and, and it's actually soaking up the energy from what you're doing, you actually feel better after you've done it than before you started. And that's how I often feel at the end of the day. Not always. Sometimes, you know, we tape a show at 30 Rock. I have Conan's old studio, by the way. I told him he can't have it back. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a... He's it's, used to that. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Oh, so, you know, you have an, ex- this an incredible experience, but sometimes it, you, get the, you get worn down and I do like to operate. It does happen to you yeah, occasionally. Without yeah. question. But I tell you, my salvation is the weekends because I'm a complete hermit. I mean, I don't shave. Uh, you know, I just, I, I work out. I play with the kids. I got four of them with Lisa. Uh, I don't go out. Uh, you know, people think, and my wife complains that I'm boring. She says, people think you're all this, you know, fun, fun life. You're not, you're boring. And I get that, uh, like, uh, appropriately I should hear that because I don't go out at all. However, that allows me to sort of recenter myself. And you need, I think, a good day or two away from all the things happening in your life when you turn off the Blackberry and live life like it's supposed to be lived. Okay, so you do that. So you're saying that someone, maybe one of us out there who'd like to have this kind of energy, if you recharge... Yeah. And if you have the right attitude, you can do it. And it's hard to recharge in 10 minutes. I mean, it's a start, uh, mm-hmm. but you got to recharge. you meditate or do any of that kind I do. of stuff? You do. I do. The, the trans- quick- I do. I do transcendental meditation. Uh, yeah. I'm not, not good at it every day. And like most people out there, I stink at a lot of the deeper aspects of it, but and I work at it. What's it, the biggest trial in your life, the biggest uh, difficulty you've ever had? Uh, the biggest challenge I mean, in day to day is no maybe some big event like did oh. you ever overcome some big disaster or some big tough thing that were that toughened you or or made you uh, you know see the world in, in a better perspective probably the most difficult thing I ever did uh, was as soon as I finished my training and I had you know I got, again had great teachers I trained at New York Presbyterian Columbia University I traveled the world visiting hospitals from Paris to Toronto to, to Los Angeles you know great centers uh, in cardiac surgery but then one day. Uh, the, the day I got back, they said, this patient needs your, need your help, go operate on him. And I was uh, you know, do, doing heart transplants. And uh, realizing that this heart was like a python squirming out of the chest of a patient whose uh, bone, breastbone I'd broken open. And realizing this, this heart wasn't my friend. That by touching it, it could stop and kill the patient. That if I didn't caress it the right way and get it to function, it could really hurt me and the patient. And then having to have the insight that in fact I was wrong, that it was my ally 
that what I need to do is not fight and force this, this, this coiled up serpent in the chest to cooperate, but rather cajole it, coax it, uh, train it. Encourage. Encourage it. Mm. And, you know, with your hand, massage it. That's what you're it. all about. It's, it is. Yeah. And it, by the way, that was a big insight for me because it changed the way I thought about my field. It wasn't about me being so darn hot and, and great at what I did that I could, you know, chase away any disease. It was about making peace and embracing the monster of death, which is what heart doctors especially have to do. Hey, doctor.